Hello guys. Welcome back to the Create Engaging E-Learning Content with Active Presenter 8 video series. As you may know, you can find many articles about, how to create e-learning content, on our tutorial page. Each one provides you with detailed steps to work with a single feature in Active Presenter 8. Once you understand these features, you can combine them, to create eye-catching games or online lectures. This video is a simple example of this combination. Let's combine two features of Active Presenter, including drop areas, and multiple choice questions, to create a shape patterns game. This game is designed for kindergarteners. It is another logic pattern game, along with the color patterns game. It asks players to identify a repeating pattern of various objects. They can be shapes, images, icons. After recognizing a repeating pattern, players need to continue it by dragging an object into a drop area, or selecting an object and clicking the submit button. If the dragged or selected object is correct, they will get one point, updated on the score box. From the game description, now let's start creating this exciting game. Before diving into the crucial part, it's necessary to do the preparation step well. It helps you to save tons of time and effort. First, launch the Active Presenter application, and create a new project. Insert as many slides as you need. For example, in this game, let's create two title-only slides and two multiple choice question slides. Then, open the view tab, select resources. Click this button, to insert all resources such as images, audio, and video you need, into the project. As mentioned earlier, if players drag, or select an object correctly, they will get one point, updated on the score box. So, the next step is to create a score box for the game. Open the Home tab. Select Variables, to create a number variable. Click this button to add a new variable. Name it, for example, Score Box. The type of the score box variable should be Number. Because its function is to count points players get, when dragging or selecting a correct answer. Then, open the Insert tab, select Text Caption. Double-click it, navigate to the Home tab, select Reference. Choose the number variable you've just created. After performing the above steps, you already created a score box. However, if you want to make it more eye-catching, follow these additional steps. Drag an image, for example, a laurel wreath from the resources pane, into the canvas. You can resize it as you want. Put the image behind the text caption. Otherwise, it may accidentally hide the score. Select both the image, and the text caption. Press Ctrl G on your keyboard to group them into a single object. This action helps you to resize, or move the group easily. Right-click the group, choose Show over multiple slides. By doing so, you can make the score box displayed in all slides in your projects. To create shape patterns, in the form of a drag and drop game, let's make use of the title only slide, added in the preparation step. Enter the game instruction, in the available title placeholder. Later, you can edit its font, size, color as you want. Open the insert tab to insert shapes, or icons. After that, you can customize them in the Properties pane. Now, copy all of them and paste, to create a repeating pattern, and drag sources. First, let's create a repeating pattern using these shapes. You can use these commands, 
which can be found in the Format tab, to quickly align objects. Then, convert these shapes to drag sources. Select them, navigate to the Properties pane, Interactivity tab. In the Drag and Drop section, select Drag Source. By doing so, these objects now are able to drag to a drop area. As you can see, they are bordered by the green dashed line. Note that you can also set the effect for a drag source here. For example, if you select Highlight, a drag source will be highlighted, when players drag it. Besides, there is also an option to revert the drag source to its original position. Renaming them may help you easily set correct answer, which will be described in the next step. Next, we need to create a placeholder for those drag sources. Just open the Insert tab, select a rectangle shape and customize it. There is an important note for you. That is, you need to bring the placeholder to the back, so that it won't cover the drag sources. Now, we need a drop area. A drop area is highlighted by the red dashed line. You may want to delete the default feedback messages and drag source, because you already created them on your own. Select the drop area, navigate to the properties pane, interactivity tab, drag and drop section. Here, you can set the effect for the drop area. For example, if you select zoom, the drop area will be enlarged, when a drag source enters it. Click this button to set accepted values, and correct values for a drop area. Select checkboxes in the accept column, to specify which drag sources can be dropped into a drop area. If you allow players to drag all drag sources into it, select this checkbox. The correct column allows you to specify correct values. For instance, the yellow star drag source is the correct value. So, let's select this checkbox. As you can see, after specifying the correct answer, the orange arrow appears. It is the drag and drop connector, denoting that dropping a drag source into a drop area, is a correct action. There is another faster way to set correct values. You just need to click the marker in the middle of a drag source, and move the mouse to a drop area. These properties allow you to set snap behaviors. When you insert a drop area, it has default events, actions. However, feel free to delete the unwanted, and customize them the way you want. For example, add the play audio action, to both the on correct and on incorrect events. The meaning of these events actions is to inform players, whether their action is correct or not. Meanwhile, the adjust variable action, is only added to the on correct event. When players drag the correct drag source into the drop area, they will get one point. The point is updated in the score box. Similar to the play audio action, the show feedback layer action is also added, to both the on correct and on incorrect event. Thanks to that, the correct and incorrect feedback will appear correspondingly, to inform players, whether their answer is correct or not. Another way to create the shape patterns game is to use multiple choice questions. In the preparation step, you already inserted this question type. Enter the game instruction. Drag images from the resources pane into the canvas. Perform the same steps as guided earlier, to create a repeating pattern. Open the Insert tab to insert a shape, representing the missing object, in the pattern. Change the question layout by selecting the answer area. In the Properties pane, Size and Properties tab, Container Layout section, select None. Then, freely customize the answer options. You can resize and reposition them. Select an answer option. In the Properties pane, Style and Effects tab, Fill section, Select Image Fill. Then, 
choose an image from the project, or from your computer. Later, you can easily customize the radio styles in the Format tab. Double-click an answer option, to specify it as a correct answer. Do the same steps as guided earlier to customize events, actions for the question. You can customize other elements by yourself, to make the game look more eye-catching. For example, you can customize the submit button, feedback layers, the game layout, and so on. To export the project to HTML5 output, open the Export tab, select one of these outputs. However, before exporting, feel free to preview it by clicking this button. Thank you for watching. See you again in the next e-learning videos.